you spooky lovers out there. Uh, we're going to go through a couple of Halloween-themed episodes for the month of October. Uh, we're going to talk about the origins of Halloween, some popular Halloween things. Later on in a week or so, uh, I'm going to release a couple of Halloween scary stories. And after that, uh, around Halloween time frame, I'm going to release another couple of Halloween scary stories. So, it's Halloween time, Halloween season. Enjoy all the content that you can before it's over. Uh, so sit back and relax and enjoy the origins of Halloween. Halloween originally comes from a few different places. One of the original festivities that started Halloween was the Celtic Festival of Samhain. The ancient Celts, who inhabited what is now Ireland, the United Kingdom, and parts of France, celebrated a festival called Samhain around November 1st. Samhain marked the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter, a time when it was believed that the boundary between the living and the dead was blurred. People lit bonfires and wore costumes to ward off evil spirits. Another origin story is the Roman influence. The Romans conquered Celtic territories, and some of their traditions merged with those of the Celts. The Roman festival Feralia, which honored the dead, was celebrated in late October. Additionally, a festival called Pomona, dedicated to the Roman goddess of fruit and trees, was celebrated around the same time and contributed to the tradition of bobbing for apples. Another influence is the Christian influence. In the 7th century, the Catholic Church established All Saints Day on November 1st to honor the saints and martyrs. The night before, October 31st, came to be known as All Hallows' Eve, later shortened to Halloween. The Church attempted to Christianize the pagan traditions of Samhain by emphasizing prayers of the dead and the idea that Halloween was a time to remember and pray for deceased loved ones. There was a medieval and modern evolution of Halloween as well. Over time, Halloween continued to evolve. In medieval Europe, various superstitions and practices associated with the supernatural became intertwined with the holiday. For example, people believed that on Halloween, spirits and supernatural beings roamed the earth leading to the tradition of wearing costumes to confuse or appease these entities. Halloween was brought to North America by Irish and Scottish immigrants in the 19th century. In the United States, it further evolved and became the holiday we recognize today. Trick-or-treating, carving pumpkins, and other modern traditions developed during this time. So the original story of Halloween is a complex story of ancient Celtic, Roman, and Christian traditions that have been blended and transformed over centuries. Today, Halloween is a holiday celebrated with costumes, decorations, candy, and various spooky and festive activities. It remains a time to honor the dead, embrace the supernatural, and have fun with family and friends. Everybody's heard the story about the Headless Horseman. But here's a little bit of history about how the story began. The story of the Headless Horseman is closely associated with the Washington Irving short story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, which was first published in 1820 as part of a collection. In The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, the Headless Horseman is a spectral and malevolent figure who haunts the Dutch settlement of Sleepy Hollow in New York's Hudson Valley during the late 18th century. The story centers around the character of Ichabod Crane, a superstitious and awkward school teacher from Connecticut who comes to Sleepy Hollow to teach the children. Ichabod Crane becomes infatuated with Katrina Van Tassel, the beautiful daughter of a wealthy farmer named Baltris Van Tassel. He hopes to marry Katrina off and inherit her new family's wealth. However, his rival for Katrina's affection is a handsome and wealthy young man named Brom Bones. One fateful night, Ichabod Crane attends a harvest party at the Van Tassel's farm. After the party, he sets out on horseback to return home. As he rides through the dark and eerie woods near Sleepy Hollow Cemetery, he encounters bumps, creaks, frogs, and all kinds of other noises. He encounters the Headless Horseman as well, 
a ghostly figure said to be the spirit of a Hessian soldier who had lost his head to a cannonball during the American Revolutionary War. The headless horseman is said to ride in search of his lost head and terrorizes anyone he encounters. Ichabod desperately tries to outrun the headless horseman, but the ghostly rider gives chase. Just as the headless horseman is about to catch Ichabod, he throws his own pumpkin-shaped head at him. The next morning, all that is found of Ichabod Crane is his hat and a smashed pumpkin. The story leaves it ambiguous whether Ichabod Crane was actually taken by the headless horseman or if it was a prank by Brom Bones to scare him away from Sleepy Hollow. The townspeople have their own theories about what happened, but the truth remains a mystery. The legend of Sleepy Hollow has become a classic American ghost story and is often associated with Halloween. The character of the Headless Horseman continues to be a popular figure in Halloween folklore and is frequently depicted in various adaptations and retellings of the story. The Salem Witch Trials were a series of events that occurred in 1692 in Salem, Massachusetts that led to the arrests and trials of numerous individuals accused of practicing witchcraft. The story of the Salem Witches is a dark and tragic chapter in American history. Here's an overview of the events. The witch trials began when a group of young girls, including Betty Paris and Abigail Williams, started exhibiting bizarre behavior such as fits, convulsions, and strange utterances. The local doctor could find no physical cause for their symptoms and suggested that they might be afflicted by witchcraft. The accusations spread. The girls accused three women of being witches. Tituba, an enslaved woman who had been telling the girls stories of magic and witchcraft, Sarah Good, a homeless woman, and Sarah Osborne, an elderly woman. These accusations triggered a series of arrests. This created mass hysteria. As the accusations spread, many more people in Salem and the surrounding towns were accused of being witches. The trials became a frenzy of accusations, trials, and public hangings. Neighbors turned against neighbors, and many innocent people were caught up in hysteria. The accused witches were brought to trial in the court of Oyer and Terminer. The trials were conducted in a manner that did not allow for a fair defense, and the judges relied on spectral evidence, which was testimony about dreams and visions, and hearsay. Nineteen people, consisting of fourteen women and five men, were hanged as witches, and one man was pressed to death with heavy stones for refusing to enter a plea. The witch trials eventually began to lose support, as people realized the lack of evidence and the injustice of the proceedings. Governor William Phipps dissolved the court of Oyer and Terminer in October 1692, effectively ending the witch trials. In the years that followed, the Salem witch trials were widely condemned. In 1711, the colony of Massachusetts passed a resolution acknowledging the errors and injustices of the trials, and in 1957, the state formally apologized for the events of 1692. The Salem Witch Trials were often seen as a cautionary tale about the dangers of mass hysteria, religious fanaticism, and abuse of power. They have been the subject of numerous books, plays, films, and continue to be a significant historical and cultural reference point in the discussion of witchcraft and the limits of justice. Halloween is the time when spooky stories and urban legends often come to the forefront. Here are some popular Halloween urban legends that have circulated over the years. The Poison Candy This is perhaps the most well-known Halloween urban legend. It suggests that malicious individuals may put razor blades, pins, or poison in Halloween candy and give it out to unsuspecting children. While there have been a few isolated incidents, they are extremely rare, and most reports of tampered candy turned out to be hoaxes. The Babysitter and the Caller In this urban legend, the babysitter receives threatening phone calls while watching children. She eventually realizes that the calls are coming from inside the house, and a sinister intruder is with her. The story is the basis for the classic horror movie, When a Stranger Calls. The Hook-Handed Man 
This legend tells the tale of a couple making out in a car when they hear the news report of an escaped mental patient with a hook for a hand. When they return home, they find a bloody hook hanging from their car door. This story is a cautionary tale of the dangers of premarital sex. The Vanishing Hitchhiker A driver picks up a hitchhiker on a dark and stormy night. After giving the hitchhiker a ride, the driver turns to speak to them, only to discover that the hitchhiker has mysteriously vanished from the car. The driver then learns that the hitchhiker was a ghost who died years ago on that road. The Haunted House This legend often involves a haunted house that was the site of a gruesome murder or other tragic event. People who enter the house on Halloween night are said to encounter vengeful spirits or terrifying paranormal activity. Candyman Similar to the Bloody Mary legend, the Candyman is a supernatural entity summoned by saying his name multiple times in front of a mirror. It is said that if you repeat Candyman three times while looking in the mirror, he will appear. A killer in the back seat. A woman driving alone at night becomes convinced that someone is following her or is in the back seat of her car. In a panic, she rushes home and calls the police, only to discover that the murderer was indeed in her car and the police have caught him. Bloody Mary. This legend involves a ritual where you stand in front of a mirror, say Bloody Mary three times, and the ghostly figure of Bloody Mary is supposed to appear in the mirror. The legend has different variations, but it taps into our fear of the supernatural and the unknown. The Razor Blade Apple Similar to the Poison Candy legend, the story suggests that people might hide razor blades or other dangerous items in apples to give trick-or-treaters. There have been a few reported cases of this happening, but they are very rare. The Black Cat Black cats have been associated with superstition and Halloween, and there are urban legends about them bringing bad luck or being witches' familiars. The Legend of the Jack-O-Lantern This legend originates from an Irish folk tale about a man named Stingy Jack, who was too deceitful to enter heaven and too mischievous for hell. He was doomed to wander the earth with a carved-out, turn-up lantern to light his way. The legend gave rise to the tradition of carving pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns. The Halloween Party Massacre This legend tells the story of a Halloween party where the person is dressed as a killer goes on a rampage, and the partygoers assume it's just part of the act until it's too late. It plays on the fear that something sinister might be hiding behind a costume. 